Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome back to Tom May TV. I am Tom. It is time to talk about that subject. <laughs> you know, so the news came out about Disney's new annual passes. And um, I tell you what, I wanted to... You know, I wanted to wait a little bit because I wanted to make sure that we got over the emotions of the the amount of money that they're asking and the amount of features that they took away. And the fact that you, if you live outside of Florida, you, they're just one game in town for an annual pass. That's all you have. So that's what I got. So there's our old annual pass up in there, and there's uh, there's our Universal pass, which Universal's awesome. We're D23 members, absolutely. But it's time. It's time to talk about what in the world are we going to do about these annual passes. We've got to have a plan. And it's all about the math. Coming up next on Tom A TV. Okay, here we go. So, why in the world are they doing this? Well, um, you can see behind me, and maybe you can't see behind me, but um, up there it says, too many. Let me uh, let me do this right there. Too many, too many what? There's too many people in the parks. And I don't know how to say this carefully, but COVID-19 um, in a way was a help to Disney. Um, I mean, coming off the worst year of our lives, um, it's tough, but now they're wanting a lot more money and people don't have any, and what are we gonna do, right? So, but there's too many people in the parks. It's the number one complaint at Disney World is that there's just too many darn people in these parks. So um, that Disney's tired of hearing it and they agree. So um, COVID-19 helped them tremendously by coming up with a reservation system. It is the reservation system that made it possible to reopen in the state of Florida. You have to make a reservation before you do a darn thing. So make a theme park reservation or you can't get in. So these reservations allowed Disney to control how many people were coming into the parks. And it was the lesson learned. Somebody said, I think now, uh, well, a member of the Obama administration said, don't never let a crisis go to waste. And Disney did not. And therefore, now they have a reservation system where they can control the number of people in the park. But... In the next part uh, that I want to talk about, um, they want to get the crowds down, but they want to keep the money up. Look, this isn't a charity. Disney is a business. It's a publicly owned company. They have stockholders. I own stock in Disney. And, you know, here, if I want to return, they got to find a way to get the crowds down so people quit complaining and keep the money. So that explains, in a good business, how some of the decisions they make were arrived at. For instance, Magical Express is gone. Now, I think it's completely silly the way they came out and they explained it. They said Magical Express is gone because there's Uber. Well, people Uber now. So we don't need the buses, the fuel in the buses, you to get off a plane and not worry about your luggage, right? 
Uh, and all of a sudden, you get to the resort, you check in, you don't even have to go to the desk, you hit your magic band, the broom opens up, there's your luggage, right? Let me tell you, we, we, we've we come to Disney a lot, Disney World a lot, from when we lived in New York, upstate New York, we lived in uh, Denver, we lived in Texas, we came to Disney a bunch, took kids, took grandkids, and... We only ever stayed at a Disney resort, well, just a few times, and we did the Magical Express twice, and it is magical. It's fantastic. And it's smart for Disney because you're a captive audience. You don't have no car. You can't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere to eat unless it's Disney, right? So you're kind of stuck there. So I was surprised that Magical Express is gone, but I think at the end of the day... They could just say, look, that's a great, big, massive expense for Disney. And they're going to see if they can do without it. Because there's Uber. Eh, Uber. Just Uber it. You know, have you rented a car lately? Get ready to saw off a arm and a leg and maybe half of another arm. So, uh, that's rough. What else has gone out of the... Uh, out of the magic, the magic is calling, the magic is calling, the magic is calling uh, your banker so you can get a second mortgage on your house so you can afford to go to this thing. So um, there's no more photo pass. So when you buy any of the passes that are here, Pixie Dust, Pirate, Sorcerer, and these first three are only for Florida residents, which means if you're outside of Florida, there's only one game in town. You're in Credit Pass, or you're not going. Okay? So we're going to do the math here in a minute, because uh, I will show you that when you're confused and you don't know what to do, if you're driving a car at 100 miles an hour and there's fog down in the bottom of a swooping down road what do you do you pull your foot off the gas because you don't know what's in the fog but if the fog was gone you could decide whether to hammer down or hit the brakes so we're going to get rid of the fog by doing the math on what in the world we're going to and i hope it helps you i hope it's going to help you figure out whether or not you want to get an credit pass or anything else in case you're a florida resident so let's take a look at that but let's finish up with the big board up here. Let's see if I forgot anything. Just want to make sure. So we've got to keep the crowds and the money. And yeah, last thing on the business. I, uh, so as we move from Colorado to Florida, we let our passes go, which means we have been without a pass. Rhonda and I have been out without a pass, and we've been just been buying the Florida Four passes in order to go into the parks and do, uh, you know, is to cover the parks. And quite to be quite honest, we haven't done that much in Disney. But we will be buying on the 8th when these things go on sale. And I, you might be surprised about what pass we're getting, but I'll, I'll get to that. So here we go. So let's take a look at the math, shall we? So when the details are clear, the decisions are very easy. Okay? So are you going to buy a uh, yearly pass? I think this is the math that you need to pay attention to. Right now, currently, the price of a ticket for a person is 109 bucks, And we'll just keep the math simple. That means a family of four... To go in a the way I see a, a, a week long trip to Disney is you're going to go to all four parks, which means I need, and this is as little as little as you can spend. If I'm not going to buy the Incredi Pass, and I'm going to go to all four parks, it's going to cost me 109. But when you put in that, you need four people and four tickets the price comes down slightly the week that i looked at was like the third week next month um the price came down to like 103 dollars per ticket 
and they they can go up a dollar on the weekend, you know, and stuff like that. So you you just got to look at it. But long story short, what happens is a family of four costs one thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and ninety six cents, and that doesn't even get you parking. So that's going to be about twenty five bucks a day if you go in general parking. Um. If you buy the Increda Pass for a family of four, remember they're twelve ninety nine a piece. There's going to be some tax in there, so a family of four there costs five thousand. Be still, my heart. Let me let me start that again. Five thousand five hundred thirty three dollars and seventy four cents. But that does include parking. Now, the simple math tells you. If you live in Colorado like my son and my daughter, or upstate New York like my other son, or in Texas like my other son, and you're coming, you can go not just once. You can go you can go once, which costs you eighteen oh seven, and by the way, you got no food. You get no food, no merchandise. No hotel, no transportation. Remember, there's Uber. No photo pass, and you're not going to a water park for any of that money either. Are we having fun yet? I don't think you're having fun. Okay. See you. Um... Do the math here. You can come to Disney as a family as far as tickets are concerned. You could come three times and it still would not add up to 55, 33, 74 in just tickets. It's only on the fourth trip to Disney in a 12 month calendar year that this Incredipass saves you money. So there's the answer to the first question. Are you coming four times? If you are, I think you're loaded with cash. And and that's great. Good for you. And you should buy the Increda Pass. No doubt about it. You're going to save money on parking, blah, blah, blah. But if you're coming twice or three times, it doesn't make sense. You're going to be better off by not buying the Increda Pass and just buying the tickets. Um, the one, but you have to be all right with going to one park in one day, staying all day, doing what you do. There's no park hopping. There's no water parks. There's no mini golf. There's no of the sporting things that they have in in the in the sport package, which gets you the water parks. One of them's closed, by the way, right now, which doesn't help sales on water parks. Um, and uh, so, I mean, that's the long and the short of it right there, gang. So I don't know what you want to do here, but you kind of got to ask yourself, how much are you going to come? Okay, so think about this. So to Disney's credit, um. The Increda Pass doesn't have any restrictions on any days, which is the only way you can really do it when they're coming from out of state. I mean, you can't charge them a, an annual pass and then tell them there's a bunch of days you can't come when you live out of state. You've got to have the calendar open to you. So that makes sense. Okay? But Tom and Rhonda got to buy passes because we have a YouTube channel and we have to cover the parks so which one are we going to get so listen up florida residents because this part is for you let's look at the next one down the disney sorcerer pass let's uh read more on the disney sorcerer's pass here's some details so if you're a florida resident um, you have this available to you so it's $8.99 and you can visit uh, the theme parks 
with advanced park reservations only. The pass is valid except for blackout dates. So here's where the rubber really hits the road. Now, I will just say, look down here. All of the annual passes have standard theme park parking is included and you get some discounts on merchandise they all go up because you bought a more expensive pass they're all the same okay you get the ability to add on disney photo pass in there on an annual pass it's 99 bucks because um if you're buying the disney photo pass for a family of four it's going to cost you 169 dollars for that visit to Disney on that day okay so that's the deal there so um, so take a look at that so where it gets interesting is you got to look at the blackout dates because this is where the rubber hits the road so the Sorcerer's Pass would be the best one next to the Incredit Pass so you've got all September October so right after you eat turkey, the day before Turkey Day, and that super busy weekend, you can't come. The last weeks in, in December when it's magical for Christmas, you're not getting in, folks. March, June, right? The rest of the, the, rest of the year looks good. Okay, so you've got to ask yourself, if you're a Florida resident, are you okay with missing after Thanksgiving and December? Because if you are, maybe uh, going that way is for you. Okay? So that's the Sorcerer's Pass. So let's take a look at the Pirate Pass. Arr, okay? You, you get it, right? Less money but more block out dates. Let's take a look at what they are. So there's some days in October. Don't ask me why. You go on weekdays and there's some weekends. So it's a little extended around Thanksgiving. It's basically the same in December, although they whack that first uh, Saturday. You're missing some days in January, February, uh, you're missing spring break, and you got to ask yourself, if you're a Florida resident, I mean, we live in Kissimmee. I'm not, I'm not going during spring break anyways. Why in the world would you want, why would you want that opened up to you? And then and then March, you know, it's still a spring break thing, I think, and that's really spring break prime season. Fourth of July-ish, they close you out. September a little bit, October. Not terrible. Not terrible. But let me show you the one, and let me just come out with it. Let me show you the one that we're going to buy to cover the parks, which is our job. Okay? We're going cheapskates. You know, look, we've got um, SeaWorld passes, um, you know, which get you over to Tampa Bay. Um You know, so uh, to Bush Gardens, uh, we are getting, uh, you know, we've got Universal passes. We just, we love Universal. And we're getting Disney passes, and that's basically what we do. We're trying to keep our grandkids up on what old Papa and Nana are doing here. So uh, we're getting the Pixie Dust Pass because you know why? Because it makes sense for us. Take a look. We're not going most weekends anyways. So in September, it's totally open to the realistic days we're going to go anyways. October looks good. November, all right. So we're not going after Thanksgiving. I can live with it. December, we'll get that good Christmassy Disney feeling before. I mean, they start decorating for Christmas <laughs> I mean, right after Halloween, right? We're going to be okay. They're not putting turkeys up everywhere for November. It, they start with Christmas. Plenty of time to see Christmas stuff. Not that important. Although I did have a dream that I wanted to go on Christmas Day once. 
and uh, that was back when they were doing the parade and it was live and it wasn't like two weeks before and they were taping Christmas Day, right? So January looks good, February looks good, you know, March, April, I, I'm not going during spring break anyways, it's, it's madness there. And if I had to go to a spring uh, 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 theme park, there's all kinds of them I could go to. June, July, and August. We can cover it all. We can cover the opening of Tr Tron. We can do Ratatouille's adventure. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we need to get to work on Disney. We know, we know, we need to get at it. But that's that's where I got gotcha. you. So I mean, what do you think here, gang? What in the world are you thinking? How are you gonna? How are you going to buy this pass or maybe not buy this pass to your advantage? That's some of the math. Wanted to make sure we got an opinion in on it. Now you know what passes we're going to get uh, on the 8th. And uh, that's what we're doing. Hopefully that helps you. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one. And I ask you. Where else would you rather be to get your knowledge about what kind of tickets to buy than watching some Tom A. TV? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. We need you. See you soon.